Okay, so I wanted to um, do sort of a wrap up on uh, horizontal asymptotes. Let me just make this one bigger too. Okay. Um, so I'm talking about like end behavior, horizontal asymptotes. We'll do some oblique asymptotes. And mostly end behavior, right? And most of this, again, are related to limits. Not most of this. All of this is related to these two limits as x is going to infinity and x is going to minus infinity. So these are all related problems. And so if you're given a limit problem, you should do the same sort of techniques. OK. Um, so and then we talked about four rational functions. That is functions that look like this, like p of x over q of x, where p and q are both um, polynomials. Um, then we really end up, and through the analysis that we do, I, I just want to show it to you under like three main cases that happen. Um, and so I we we talked about this that sort of the limit because of what happens for polynomials, the limit as x goes to infinity um, of p of x over q of x is very closely related to and equal to this limit as x goes to infinity of the leading term of p of x and over the leading term of q of x. But I want you to see kind of how that happens through this analysis that we're doing. But like, um, so let's do an example. So there are four cases, case one, um, is where if the degree of P is less than the degree of Q of X, right? So an example of this is like this limit. X going to infinity of, let's say, X squared plus X minus 5 over negative X cubed minus 2X plus 2, right? And the two items that I'm looking at are the degree up here, that's a 2, and the degree down there, that's a 3. And I don't care that it's a 2 and a 3. I do care that 2 is less than 3, right? And so it's bigger, degree is bigger on bottom, right? So this is the first case. Okay, so I'm going to, do y'all remember we're going to divide um, both numerator and denominator? by kind of x to the n, where n is the degree of the denominator, right? So here I'm going to x squared plus x minus 5, and this is going to be 1 over the degree of the denominator is 3. So, and again, remember this technique is to bring the denominator, oops, I don't know what's happened there, into a place where that, its limit is just a finite number, and then we can look kind of it, like as a way to get the numerator, like just so I can look at kind of what's happening in the numerator. So, here's what I got. I'm going to distribute this to each piece. So I get 1 over x here plus 1 over x squared minus 5 over x cubed over negative 1 minus 2, oops, should be 2 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed, right? And again, this limit is 0. All these up here are 0. This is zero, this is zero. And so I really get the limit, this is not the limit, but I really get, sorry, I because I took the limit, zero over one. 
and that's just zero. So when the degree is bigger on the bottom, right, it ends up overpowering what's happening in the numerator. And this um, limit will always be zero in this case. So the horizontal asymptote here is the line y is equal to zero. And you can kind of see how, like, you'll always get zero in the numerator, because, right, you'll all, like, when the degree on bottom is um, bigger, all these numbers will be sort of going to zero. And you'll just get a whole number in the bottom. And so you'll always get some sort of form of zero over some number, right, when you do this. Okay, so the horizontal asymptote is always y equals zero. But on your, like, we know this is true, you should really be categorizing these again by the cases, degree of P is less than degree of Q, like the degree on bottom is bigger, and you know what you expect, you should still show all this work, right? So show this work for me um, so that I know um, you understand the reasons why this is true. Okay, case two. Um, we're going to do, <clears throat> case two is the case where the degrees are equal, so the degree of P of X on top is equal to the degree of Q of X. <clears throat> so let's say this limit, and I'll get 2X squared plus X minus 5 over negative 3X squared minus 2X plus 1. Okay, and again, multiply top, uh, divide top and bottom. I'm still going to do that, divide top and bottom by x to the n, n is the degree of q. Okay, so I get 2x squared plus x minus 5, I'm going to multiply by 1 over x squared, and again, that's because this guy is squared right there, that's the one I'm looking at. <clears throat> when I do that, I'll get this first, and again, I'm going to distribute each of these to each piece, so I'll get 2 plus 1 over x minus 5 over x squared over negative 3 minus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared. And again, do you see, you kind of see this idea that in the polynomials, this piece will be the most powerful, the leading term, and the rest of these pieces are going to go to zero. Do you see how it dominates? Because this sort of analysis shows you which one is the most powerful. So this limit here should be 2 on top over negative 3. And if you look again, you'll see this kind of these here. There's my 2. That's where it's coming from. And there's my negative 3, the leading um, coefficients. So if we were doing this with like a lot of times for a shortcut method or for a course for non-STEM majors, what um, this is what I expect. And you should know this um, because like again if you're not doing this for the exam you can do this kind of a shortcut way but on the exam I need you to show this analysis. But so if the um, leading term of p of x is ax to the n, and the leading term of q of x is bx to the n. So this sort of, like p of x, I just want to make sure that when I use this language you understand sort of what I'm speaking. Right, this is ax to the n plus a whole bunch of other stuff. And this is bx to the n plus a whole bunch of other stuff. But these are the leading terms, right? This is what this looks like. Then the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to a over b. So when I do this division, everything cancels out. I'm going to divide by x to the n, and I'll just be left with these two guys in the limit. And that's what happened in this previous one. Do you see that these leading terms are 2 over negative 3? And that's what I ended up with here. Okay, 
So that's case two. Um, case three, again, the first case we did was the, the degree is bigger on bottom. The second case is the degrees are equal. Third case is the degree on top is bigger. <clears throat> so the degree of P bigger than the degree of Q. Okay. So here, let's do a problem, the limit, and see what happens. Minus 6. over x squared plus 2x plus 1, maybe. Sorry, my pen's being a little glitchy. There we go. And again, divide top and bottom by like x to the n, n is the degree of q. All of these, we're doing the same analysis, right? So, and again, it helps me to see what's happening. And compare growth rates. 1 over x squared, 1 over x squared, right? So again, this is the limit as x goes to infinity of x minus 1 over x minus 6 over x squared over 1 plus 2 over x plus 1 over x. So again, these are going to 0. This is going to 0. And in, I really have the limit as x goes to infinity of just x over 1, right? This is the only piece that I sort of have to figure out. But as x goes to infinity, this is the identity function. So this top piece is also going to infinity. So this should be going to infinity. Do you see that? So like, there's no horizontal asymptote here. Because the horizontal asymptote is a line, a straight uh, horizontal line um, going across. Now, I do want to make note, like we can say, and sometimes what people do, so the subcase here is that this will have an oblique asymptote. In particular, do you see how... The it is going to infinity, but I can say it's going to infinity linearly. So this function grows toward infinity, right? But at a linear rate. And by linear rate, I just want to make sure, I mean, the degree here is just one. That's what we mean by a linear function. It's a polynomial of degree one, right? So it's not, the growth isn't quadratic. The growth is not exponential. It's not logarithmic. It's linear, right? It mimics a linear function. So we like to find, so this is the subcase when the degree of p is one higher, one number higher than the degree of q of x, I get an oblique asymptote. And an oblique asymptote, again, and I might just draw a quick picture so you can see what it looks like graphically. Um, but let's say that I had like a vertical asymptote here at 1. And then an oblique asymptote maybe down here. Um, this oblique asymptote is really a line. So maybe this is the line y is equal to like 3x minus 3, something like that. And then my function will look sort of like this. It will come down, and instead of being a straight line across, it will mimic this long term. And then down here, it will look like this, maybe. Do you see that? 
So it this is what an, like a rational function with an oblique asymptote looks like. Long-term behavior looks like I'm moving up, right? I'm going up towards infinity. Like this arrow is pointing up and will continue to grow up. But it's growing up and getting closer and closer to this dotted line. And very far out, it will look like that dotted line. And down this way, it will look like this part of the dotted line. Does that make sense? So it just gets closer and closer to that line. Um, when this is true, we can like increase the accuracy of our graphs by actually finding the oblique asymptote. And to do that, I'm going to use long division, long polynomial division. So let me do it on this problem. Let's see. I just want to make sure I have it written down <clears throat> correctly. So I'll do this. So long polynomial division. I set up long division, right? Do y'all remember this like long division, this division sign? I'm going to put the denominator here and the numerator here, x cubed. Now, on my paper, it's x cubed minus x minus 6. Let me make sure. Is it plus 6 or minus 6? I just am going to do, oh, yeah, it's minus 6. Um, so I have a minus 6. Now, do you see there's an x squared term missing here? It goes from x cubed to minus x. I have to put that in. So plus 0x squared minus x minus 6. So you have to put in this placeholder. And when numbers, when we have numbers, we don't have to do this because the zeros are already there. Like if I'm dividing 6 into, let's say, like 1,036, that 0 is there already as a placeholder. But in um, in um, polynomials, we don't have 0 placeholders, so I have to put it in. Okay, so, and then I'm going to do polynomial division um, just like I normally, well, I'll just show it to you. I was going to say like you normally would, but okay. So I really just look at the leading terms here. I say, what do I multiply by x squared to get x cubed? Okay, so that I just, I multiply, I'm going to do an x, right? x times x squared is x cubed. So you just, you just put up here. You don't worry about the rest of this. So all this and all this, I don't worry about at this point. I'm just matching the leading, the first terms. So, and really you can just do x cubed over x squared, and you just see what you get, x. So I did this guy right here, that guy goes on top, this guy goes on bottom, and I just do the division for these leading terms. Okay. And then, but then I multiply this by this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and I write that down here. So I get x cubed, I did that, plus 2x squared plus x. Okay, so I did that. I found out how many times it goes in. I multiplied. I get this new line. The next step is to subtract. So when you do polynomial division, you have to change every sign. Minus, minus, minus. If you forget this, you should use different colors like I'm using. It's really helpful. And then always here, you should get a zero. X cubed minus X cubed is zero X cubed. That's what you want. 0x squared minus 2x squared is minus 2x squared, and I get a negative 2x, and then minus 6, okay? Now, I put this in so that you could see, but usually people leave this off, and then they start the whole process again. What do I, and they'll do like negative 2x squared, again, this guy, oh, that did not work. this guy, sorry, over, my pen is really this guy. Do you see that? There. Is that okay? Okay. So, hold on, I'm going to rewrite this guy. Okay. So this should be negative 2x squared. Okay. So negative 2x squared over x squared is just negative 2. You see that? So I'm going to put a negative 2 up there. And then again, I'm going to go back and like undo all this because I already used it. 
I'm going to multiply negative 2 times all these. You have to include the sign. So it's negative 2. So I get a negative 2x squared, negative 4x, minus 2. Again, change all the signs. Plus, plus, plus. Okay. If This is just a random coincidence that the this first one had all minuses and this one has all pluses. That's not a pattern. That's just like a random chance. Okay. So again, when I add these, this first column, negative 2x squared plus 2x squared, I'll get a 0x squared. Negative 2x plus 4x is plus 2x. And then minus 4. Okay. And again, usually people won't write this, but you need to check to make sure if these guys don't cancel, if these guys don't zero out, you have done it wrong. They will zero out every single time, the leading terms, because you're really just picking this thing to zero them out, okay? Okay, once this degree is lower than this degree, you see that? This is a quadratic, this is linear, I'm done. So this division process tells me this. So the limit, I, I'm really going back to this problem. The limit is, first of all, I just want to make sure that you understand what division tells us. This is what I want to do. I ha started out with this function, right? Long division gives us another way to write this function. It's 2, it's the quotient, this x minus 2, plus, and this remainder, 2x minus 4, over x squared plus 2x plus 1. These two functions are exactly the same. These two functions are equal. But again, with different um, forms. Does that make sense? But it helps us see this piece, again, is going to be the oblique asymptote. So whatever you got here, right, this guy that you got as a result of the division is the oblique asymptote. This guy goes back and it has a bigger degree on bottom than top, and the limit here, if I redid it, would be 0. So when I take the limit, so the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed minus x minus 6. And this limit right? I know that this overall limit is infinity, but this piece is the main piece, so it will really be this sort of like, it's approximately x minus 2, and this piece is going to go to 0, right? And again, I can do this whole limit, x going to infinity, the same analysis that I did before, 2x minus 4, I'm going to divide on top and bottom by 1 over x squared. I want to make sure you understand, like, why I'm saying it's going to 0. This is 2 over x minus 4 over x squared. And this is 1 plus 2 over x squared, uh, 2 over x plus 1 over x squared, and again, all these go to 0, and I'll get 0 over 1 here, which is just 0. So this piece over here is going to 0, and this will just define, x minus 2 will define the growth of this function. So here I have an oblique asymptote. at or of y equals x minus 2. 